Hey everybody, and welcome to a new video. Due to unfortunate circumstance, I am unable to record myself for this video, so please accept this cardboard cutout of me instead. Lately, I've been playing Silent Hill, since I never had the chance to play through the games. The most iconic aspect of this series, other than Pyramid Head, is the suffocating, claustrophobic fog that shrouds the town. The first Silent Hill game came out in 1999, so this means a similar fog effect should be fairly easy to implement, right? Yeah, it actually is pretty easy to implement. There's a lot of different techniques for fog, but today, we'll be focusing on the two most basic. Alright, alright, hold your horses, pal. Fog is something that exists in the real world, so we should learn what it is exactly before we try and recreate it visually. Fog is essentially a low-lying cloud, a dense collection of water droplets. These water droplets scatter light and prevent us from seeing clearly through. The more water droplets there are, the more light gets scattered, and the harder it is to see. The fog from Silent Hill is not wholly unrealistic, it is very possible for fog to be so dense that you cannot see a few feet in front of your face. With this new knowledge, we can infer some things about our fog effect. Obviously, we are not going to simulate real water droplets to scatter light rays. Even though that would be really cool, it is not feasible computationally. Instead, let's simplify it much more. A game object should become more and more obscured the farther it is from your view. The rate at which it becomes obscured is dependent on the density of the fog. Thankfully, this is trivial to implement as a post-processing effect. As I have mentioned before in my What is Gooch shading video, Unity keeps track of something called a camera depth texture, where each pixel of that texture represents the distance of the pixel from the camera. We take these depth values, linearize them, then multiply them by the far clipping plane's distance to get the proper view distance. With this view distance, we can now compute a fog factor. There's a lot of options here for fog factors, and by a lot, I mean generally three. You've got linear fog, exponential fog, and exponential squared fog. Linear fog is, well, it's linear. You calculate it by taking the endpoint of the fog, subtracting it by the depth of the pixel, and then dividing it by the end minus the start. Exponential fog is, well, it's exponential. The general formula is 2 to the negative depth times density. Since the exponent is negative, it is the same as 1 over 2 to the depth times density, which makes the value start at 1 and approach 0. This method of fog calculation is a bit more realistic than the linear fog, but it also never fully reaches 0, so the fog will never become entirely opaque. Exponential squared fog is, well, I think you get it at this point. It's the same as the previous formula, but you square the depth times density before you use it as a negative exponent. This formula is nice because it has less fog at close range, but it gets stronger much faster, and unlike exponential fog, does actually reach zero, so the fog will become fully opaque. Regardless of what fog factor calculation you use, we use it as an interpolator between the original pixel color of our render and the fog color. So with our effect completed, we can now see our wonderful fog in Unity, and... It doesn't work! Well, it actually does work. What doesn't work is our grass. If you look at it at odd angles, you can see that the grass isn't actually blocking the fog like it should. If we visualize our depth texture, we see that the grass is non-existent. This is because Unity is extremely cringe. Unity only writes objects to the camera depth texture if they have a shadow caster pass in their shader. And unfortunately, if I added that to my grass shader, the FPS of our project would quickly approach zero due to how much grass there is. 
To temporarily solve this issue, we're going to have our image effect only apply to opaque geometry. Unity will now render the terrain plane and the cube, apply the fog image effect, and then render our grass on top of it. So, the image effect fog doesn't work for the grass shader because we do not have access to it in the camera depth texture due to its lack of a shadow caster pass. This means we need to apply fog to the grass manually in its fragment shader. The good news is that the method of fog application is the exact same, it's just how we get depth that is a bit different. By taking the camera's world position and subtracting the world position of our grass position, we can calculate the magnitude of this vector to get the view distance. Then we calculate the fog factor all the same, and our grass has fog now. So what's the point? Well, other than just having a foggy scene in your game, fog is most commonly used as an image effect to convey distance. Faraway objects become faded out and actually feel far away because of it. Take for instance this stock photo of a lady pointing at a building in the distance for some reason. The building is not as clear as this boat that is closer to the camera. Another use for fog is to hide pop-ins. If you remember from my first grass video, to improve performance I would remove grass that was too far away from the camera. In order to easily hide that, I could use fog so that you can't see the grass that is no longer there. This basic fog effect is kind of just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to atmospheric scattering. Modern techniques achieve a lot more in terms of realism and aesthetic appeal, but I unfortunately know nothing about these techniques. So until I learn those, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.